Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Developing Fast Data Architectures with Streaming Applications by guest speaker Carl Waden, Director of Product Management at Lightbend. Now, before I hand over to Carl, just a moment for some housekeeping. If you have any questions, please fire them over via the chat box, and Carl will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. We are recording the session, and I will send over a link to the recording and the slides um, after the talk later this week. Now I'm going to hand over to Carl to begin the session. Hi, thanks Adele. This is Carl Whedon, Director of Product Management from Lightbend. Um, we are excited to be here today to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing with uh, our Fast Data platform. Um, the Fast Data platform is a project that uh, that Lightbend has been working on over the last probably five months. Uh, we're in early alpha with it, but really um, we're excited to, to give you a little bit of a preview of what we're doing and how and what the thinking was behind uh, us working in this direction. So quick agenda, um, you know, we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about what's changing um, and how that's changing. We'll talk about the reactive platform, uh, what is fast data, and uh, give you some, some time for questions. So, um, you know, over the last probably 10, 12, 15 years, I think you'll, you'll agree that big data has really been a, a big focal point. It's given a lot of potentially powerful um, tools to, uh, to teams and companies working with data today. Um, it's brought into, this, into context this idea of being able to do large-scale distributed operations on uh, large data sets, um, and it's been primarily batch-focused. Um, that being good, in many cases, the types of end, in, uh, of um, utilization of data has been batch driven and has really been focused on their ability to uh, process this data in parallel. Um, so what's different today? We're moving more towards fast data, which is the idea that there's a continuous flow of data, um, less downtime, more delivery, uh, continuous processing, and the need to start looking at things a little differently in more of a streams driven fashion. Um, fast data is really taking and building on all the lessons we had, we had done <coughs> with big data in the sense that, you know, we're talking about massively parallel operations, scalable architectures, and a variety of other tool sets, but ultimately um, it's really more of a continuous integration problem than it is a, a batch-driven problem. So what does this mean? You know, as we know, data volume and variety and velocity are exploding. There's no real time to process and react in, uh, in batch mode, even small ones, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, and big data tools are just not built for this. They're really there to support uh, a MapReduce style interaction with um, big data. And what, what this leads us to believe is that businesses need a super scalable intelligent system that's able to learn and can react in real time to help drive that. And we'll talk about what that means from the FDP. Um, Lightbend, the company behind both the reactive manifesto as well as the reactive platform and technologies such as Scala, Akka, Play, Legome, um, <clears throat> follows the Reactive Manifesto tightly. Um, it's worth noting that in, in the context of this, of this uh, platform, reactive tendency is, is uh, you know, really our goal. Um, just for recap real quick, what does that mean? It means that you know, systems need to be responsive, meaning they uh, provide data uh, in, in advance of the, the desired need and are capable of responding to, you, to user request or system request. Elastic, meaning they can scale both horizontally and vertically to meet um, you know, uh, processing goals. And then resilient in the sense that um, failure is a design feature, not a, an afterthought. So to be able to fail gracefully and to exchange workload is part of that. And then the core of that, our belief is that it'd be in order to be able to do that, you have to be message driven. So, you know, asynchronous system design is the core. So, we did a little bit of a survey uh, last year uh, designed to get a sense of within our customer base, which is really generally tends to be a little farther ahead than um, the market average, uh, whether this batch or streaming story was really playing out. Uh, we looked at uh, a couple different points in, in the questionnaire. Uh, there's actually a, a larger 
a larger version of this with more detail, but I'm, I've just picked a few out that I think make sense. Um, you know, how would you best describe your organization's overall data processing systems or practices today? And you know, of those, 8% said there was all batch and no real time. 31% said mostly batch, a little real time. 21% said equal amounts of batch in real time. 35% said mostly real time and some batch, and then 5% was all real time processing. Recognizing that this is dependent on different, from where you are in your business cycle with uh, things. But, you know, the predominance, you know, to our surprise, was already doing um, more real time processing or equal amounts um, than otherwise. So, it sounds to me like, you know, that's an interesting story there. So, what were they using it for? Well, we also found another uh, interesting little uh, piece of information, which was that 30% of respondents uh, that were running microservices also said that most of their data processing is real-time. So we saw over a third correlate in terms of real-time processing in the most category with those running on microservices in production. We thought, this is not a coincidence. Um, we really need to better explore and understand that. So thirdly, we asked which technologies uh, were folks using in this case, and we uh, we see some interesting trends in this area. So uh, Kafka was really the number one, which is natural. Kafka is the messaging backplane for a majority of modern uh, streaming architectures. Um, you know, with the highest level of use in production at 18%, uh, Aka Streams was next recognizing that this is a survey of Lightbun customers, that's not surprising. Uh, Aqua Streams at 13% was, was very positive. Spark Streaming, which is interesting in many ways, um, at 12%. And then below that was Storm at 5, Flink at 1, and Samza at 1. Um, and we're planning to actually redo this survey um, early this year to get a sense of what the delta would be over six months between these. So I expect some of these to rise and fall depending on um, age and uptick, uh, naturally, but you certainly see things like Flink growing, potentially Storm uh, declining. Uh, we'll see how things uh, roll in the new year. But the lesson here is that, you know, there's certainly some uptick of, of key technologies. Um, uh, frankly, all of them <laughs> written in Litben, in the Litben stack, which is positive for us. So our answer to that is what we're calling the fast data platform. The fast data platform is really an aggregation, and think of almost a, a streaming distribution of tools designed specifically for streaming um, rather than for um, batch workloads. Uh, the uh, components we've added to this reflect a variety of different approaches to streaming processing that are appropriate for different workloads in different situations, and certainly um, aren't, you know, don't need to be used all at the same time in any context. So let me walk you through the fast data platform so you have a sense of what our approach is and how it works. So um, input comes in uh, to the fast data platform from a variety of sources. Uh, in, in many instances, this may be through a micro set of microservices-based interfaces, either supported by Ligon, Play, or Akka, um, running on the Lightband production suite. The, those microservices may trigger appropriate work, workflows, such as the connection between uh, <coughs> writing data to Kafka, maybe writing data to disk, or directly processing uh, data as part of that. Um, also, potentially, sockets uh, connecting directly to a set of Kafka topics and lining those up. Uh, logs coming in from internal sources are also appropriate, uh, but we see a variety of tools there. Um, Kafka, like I mentioned, I mentioned, is actually the, the, the core messaging backplane for Fast Data Platform. Uh, we use Kafka to uh, provide a durability of inputs and outputs in, in streaming processing in all these cases, um, and then use other tools such as um, the, the Kafka Streams library to uh, perform well-formedness or um, key operations and in inbound data, such as the use of k-tables for aggregation or, uh, or you know, summary of current values as a component of that. As well, Kafka Connect provides a very useful method for um, managing appropriate connections to 
uh, persistent storage as part of this as well. So I mentioned Kafka Streams, Kafka Connect, uh, Spark. Spark is very important to uh, FTP, and actually it's where Lightband started in terms of support for streaming technologies uh, about 18 months ago. Uh, we being the company that uh, maintains and manages uh, Scala as a language from a, a corporate steward perspective, we certainly have a lot uh, to gain from Spark's popularity over the last several years, um, and so much so that we've uh, we have a support offering to, to assist with that. But Spark is good in the sense that it mixes both the, you know, the uh, streaming and batch uh, mentalities into one technology, but it's got some interesting perspectives there. Uh, streaming really still uses uh, what I would think of as micro-batch or mini-batch uh, as part of it. So, um, you know, different latency requirements help to drive different levels of streaming uh, approach and may, um, you know, provide a counterpoint in many cases to Spark with the, the Flink technology that's also in the box as well. Flink is a, a real-time first uh, engine designed to um, support uh, different real-time execution modes, including as uh, probably one of the most complete beam runners in the market today, as well as um, an ability to use a CEP API. Uh, as part of that complex event processing. Whereas Spark, because it relies on uh, micro-batch distribution of work, can really only reach down to uh, 500 milliseconds, or in some cases down to 200 milliseconds latency. So there, there's a couple key questions in terms of how you want to do stuff and, uh, with these jobs, but um, Flink is right now really the low, lowest latency target uh, for us at this given time. Uh, so you know, you know, I mentioned Flink, Akka Streams. Um, Akka being our message-driven runtime uh, is a very powerful tool when you add back pressure to your ability to <coughs> deliver a work to a set of actors and perform um, pipeline tasks. Akka Streams is an excellent choice for um, streaming data processing and, uh, you know, it's highly performant um, in that context as well. So, you know, driving the, the totality of this system would be um, really the Lightband Reactive Platform, which is a combination of Legume, which is our opinionated microservices framework uh, designed to simplify, um, you know, uh, very rapid delivery of microservices to your customers, including, you know, complex or advanced features under the covers like CQRS, event sourcing, and sharding. Um, without having to necessarily know how to program that uh, at a lower level. Play for stateless microservices. <clears throat> Typically, Play is an excellent backend for uh, reactive web or mobile applications. Um, and then Akka, which is our message-driven uh, distributed actor framework. Uh, and Runtime, uh, which is very fluid in terms of its level of, of support and abstraction, given the actor framework as part of that. Um, and many of our customers implement uh, complex event sourcing or, um, or exchange processing architectures in ACA. And then production suite, uh, which gives you um, a well-curated set of metrics and logging, as well as uh, a variety of other tools that um, <coughs> assist in really the, the production uh, writing side of the story. Um, the one thing that we don't necessarily have an opinion on, and we do this intentionally, is um, storage. The fast data platform is designed to really stay uh, <coughs> agnostic in terms of persistent storage, whether it's SQL or NoSQL, um, HGFS, or uh, some type of object store, uh, Elasticsearch. These are all necessarily supportable through things like uh, Kafka Connect and JDBC and a variety of other tools. But the general idea is that um, we'll work with the storage tool set that might be appropriate for you. And we see lots of opinions in this category um, and some requirements to include it uh, in the platform, but we're very fluid in terms of how this is, pl we're planning to make this work as part of this. Now, you might be saying to yourself, you know, great, this looks quite interesting, but also very complex. You know, there's a couple sets of machine learning libraries and a variety of other tools. Well, part of what simplifies this is we have a, uh, we deploy 
you know, exclusively on Mesosphere DCOS. Um, this gives us uh, the ability to target on-premise deployments or cloud deployments very cleanly. Um, we obviously have uh, deployment tools to help with the more popular cloud vendors, but the general idea is that DCOS provides a good framework for workload management, uh, auto scaling, um, security management, and a variety of the other enterprise needs that you see on a consistent basis uh, in deploying these technologies. And that gives us uh, really a common baseline to work off of. So one of the things we do in addition to that, and this is very important, is you know while this may look complex, we, we work to simplify it. We actually run a copy of um, the Lightbend Fast Data Platform in the cloud, which gives us the capability to um, pull telemetry from our intelligent management component within the FTP that's deployed, the FTP cluster that's deployed, so we can start reading and interpreting system telemetry, not, not um, system data or customer data, uh, to help optimize uh, and provide hints back to the system itself, you know, such that um, it may be the case that you're processing um, a large amount of Spark uh, a, large, a large Spark job that is sourced from a coffee topic, we start to see uh, an increase in uh, data influx on Kafka. It might be appropriate to make sure that you auto scale Kafka and Spark at the same time to meet the workload. We also look for um, you know key tells or anomalies that might be uh, relevant in the style and structure of the workloads that you're doing so that we can we can key into you know things like date ranges or uh, performance correlations of all of these auto scaling components as a system rather than individually and manage things like uh, thrash or jitter in cases where uh, <coughs> you know different auto scaling components might be competing for resources or competing to scale first uh, within a specific time slice and that gives us a lot of capability there. Um, really, the, the goal here is to uh, simplify the uh, operational overhead uh, of the system and automate it as much as possible. And that's really the way we think of uh, the uh, fast data platform in general. It's really an accelerated on-ramp from building and streaming data systems in total. Uh, you know, our average installation time for a 12 to 18 node cluster is approximately 15 minutes. Um, that includes a running sample application and the rest of the components. Um, this is not a trivial thing. Uh, in many cases, selecting and, and orienting around a specific workload uh, for a size set of clusters for these technologies can take days, if not weeks. And we really feel we've started to encapsulate as much as possible of that into um, both our method of installation and our configuration tool sets, but also um, how we continue to manage things going forward. Uh, we provide some strong best practices guidance through both sample apps and documentation. Um, and for you know some guidance on what tools to use for solving specific design problems. Uh, especially in these cases, there's a reason we have roughly four streaming engines in this package. And that's because the profile of workloads and, uh, and design problems that you face require different tools. There's no expectation that a, a single application would use all of these, but it's you know, potentially possible. And then um, the FDP.AI or you know, the, the intelligent machine learning based monitoring and management of this system um, really works to take the burden of keeping things resilient, scalable, and responsive off of the operator and put it directly into um, you know, the hands of the system itself. So we start to see uh, the growth of um, self-maintaining adaptive uh, systems uh, as, a, as a, a part of FDP and a roll through. So really the objective here is to you know, give you all the tools necessary to be successful in, in, in derivation of streaming and targeting. Um, you know, and we really feel that long term, that point um, you know, is really going to be the highest cap value capability of FDP. Um, you know, since streaming is a long-lived process, and in many cases you can measure the total amount of yearly downtime that's acceptable in these systems in minutes, um, we really need to take uh, that seriously. 
Um, FDP is a natural progression of the reactive principles I showed with you earlier, uh, and really it's designed to um, <coughs> automate the reactive principles, and that's, that's our goal. Our objective is to really get a sense of um, what it takes to drive that. So where are we today? Um, you know, we're just about to release an Alpha 2. We're uh, looking for folks who are interested in participating in this uh, in, in the early releases with us. Our plan is to go to open beta um, about mid-year with a GA uh, shortly following that. But, you know, we're looking for feedback for engagement. Uh, we're very excited to work with folks who um, are making the transition from, um, you know, batch technologies to streaming. But even if you uh, missed that last run and you're working on a, uh, more of a traditional monolithic architecture, FDP is a, is a great way to um, pull things back together uh, and, uh, and get moving in that front. So uh, I wanted to just thank you for allowing me to give this quick overview and give you a sense of what's happening here. But uh, you know, we're certainly looking to uh, hear from you guys, and we're excited to, uh, to do things. So uh, thanks for the time. Great, thanks Carl. So, we'll just pause um, for a moment for some questions and if everyone wants to fire over any questions that you have via the chat box and Carl will answer those in a moment. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, <clears throat> if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. The, uh, I'm just looking to see if anything's coming through here. No. Adele, uh, you know, basic story here, guys, is that um, if you go onto our lightbend.com page and look up uh, Fast Data Platform, you'll see our latest updates in terms of what we're doing here, as well as an opportunity to sign up for uh, early access uh, as part of that, but um, we're happy to, you know, to answer qu any questions in there for Great, Carl. So we've just had a question come in, um, if you want to just have a view of the, the chat box now. Yep, I'm taking a look. So the question is, what is the gestation period to produce an MVP using the light and stack? Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> the idea behind uh, FDP as well as the uh, Lightband reactive platform is to try to drive things as quickly as possible. Um, if your question is around what are what are what is our plan to produce an MVP for a fast data platform, that's really um, going to be close to May, so two months here on that front. Um, but everything about Lightband is about developer productivity, so uh, we try to give you as much uh, automation and tooling for uh, delivering uh, these capabilities as quickly as we possibly can. Um, if you're interested, I can certainly send along some examples of other folks, but um, you know, using things like Scala and Akka, we see developers uh, accelerating their, their workflow uh, and uh, delivery times by, you know, in many cases, a half of what they've, they've used with other technology. So I'd be happy to give some examples of those as well. All right. The, um, the other side of the story here, guys, is that you know Lightband is really committed to consistent support of all the open open source technologies that we include in this package. Uh, we work closely with uh, the folks at Spark. We work closely closely with the folks uh, at Kafka, and we really feel that um, 
you know, this is an environment and a tool set that uh, reflects a, a variety of areas. Oh. All right, so we have another question, which is, are you planning to release a virtual box or something similar with your installation for developers and accelerate, to accelerate trials? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, you know, especially in this context, what, we, what we've done is we um, have the ability to leverage uh, uh, basically a set of vagrant files to do base DCOS install that we can run on. So we plan on providing a developer uh, workbench uh, in that way, absolutely. All right. Is there any other questions? Well, if there's no other questions, um, thanks a lot, Adele, for hosting me. I'm excited that we had a chance to talk, and we're looking forward to um, helping you out with anything uh, you need in terms of FAST data. Great. Thanks very much, Carl. Thanks, everyone, for joining.